This is part two of the worksheet. We're looking at a golf ball being tossed up into the air, or, or hit, I guess. And th this should be pretty straightforward. It's, it's very much similar to the other things, right? So a golf ball's hit this way. Whoop, actually I actually have to have my pencil on. A golf ball's hit this way, 25 meters per second. This is 40 degrees, and we're supposed to figure out how long it takes, takes to reach its maximum height. Okay, well height is a y thing, so we're going to need its initial velocity in y. So that's 25 sine 40. Right? So that's 10 point or 16.1 meters per second. Right? So V naught equals in Y is 16.1 meters per second. Acceleration in Y is negative 9.8 meters per second. Final velocity at its maximum height is zero. Doesn't mean it's not moving forward, it means it's not moving up anymore and hasn't started to fall back down. How long? So we're just looking for a time. Okay, so V equals V naught plus AT, so we can say 0 equals 16.1 plus negative 9.8 times T. And if we take our 16.1 and divide it by 9.8, we get a time of 1.64 seconds. Well, with the maximum height of the ball, uh, so we're looking for its final position in Y when the time is 1.64 seconds, so Y equals 1 half negative 9.8 t squared, so 1.64 squared, plus v naught, 16.1, t, 1.64, uh, plus y naught, but it's starting on the ground. So negative 4.9 times 1.64 squared, plus 16.1 times, and make sure if you do this on your calculator, you have your parentheses in there, right? Um, plus 16.1 times 1.64 is 13.32 or 13.22 meters. So y equals 13.22 meters. You could have done this another way. You could have said v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta y and found it that way. Uh, in which case you'd have had 16.1 uh, squared divided by 19.6 and you still get 13.22 meters. Okay. Total time the ball is in the air. If this is the time it takes for the ball to go all the way up, then that's also the time it takes for it to come back down. So you can take that 1.64 times 2, and you can get uh, 3.28. If you don't like to do that, you could go to the second equation, and you could say 0 equals negative 4.9t squared plus 16.1t, uh, and so it's starting and ends at 0 and then you could solve for t, right? So you could take 4.9 and uh, let's see, equals 6, so you're going to have 16.1 divided by 4.9 okay, and that's 3.285 seconds. So give or take rounding it's going to end up the same way, okay? Either way. How far away will the ball land? So this is a change in position. This is a range problem. So we need the initial velocity in, in x because it's just going to be v naught x times t. So we're just going to take uh, our initial velocity, which was 25 meters per second, times the cosine of 40 to get in the x direction. 25 cosine 40 times, and this is the entire time now, 3.28, and that'll get us how far the ball travels. That's, wow, use your parentheses correctly or your calculator lies to you. Okay. Um, that's 63 meters, give or take, 62.8 meters. Okay, so pretty straightforward problem. This one is almost identically the same problem, only, only it's given an initial velocity below horizontal. Okay, so try them, let me know. Uh, good luck. Uh, actually, I guess I could give you some answers. All right. So, how high is the building? Because this is a little bit tricky. I forgot that. Okay, so we're starting up here, uh, and we throw the ball this way, down. This is our 30 degree angle. This is 8 meters per second. And it says time is 2 seconds. So, how high is the building? Height is a y thing. So, we're looking for y not. Y not equals question mark. We know our final position, we know it ends at zero. Our initial velocity in y, you have to be careful. It is 8 sine 30, um, but that 30 is negative, and so that means this is a negative velocity, negative 4 meters per second. 
right? acceleration in y, it's still gravity, still negative 9.8. So how long does it take to get there? How far does it go? Uh, so we could be looking for a change in position, but we don't know our final velocity. So I think this is a second equation uh, kind of thing, right? We could use the third equation, v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta y, except I don't know my final velocity because it's moving when it hits the ground, and I don't know my change in y. So that's two unknowns. That doesn't work. Okay, And so that also takes the first equation out because I don't know the time or the initial velocity. Oh, I do know the time. Okay, The ball hits the ground two seconds later. Well, then let's just use the second equation. y equals 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus y naught. Right? And we're looking for why not. So 0, because it ends at the ground, is negative 4.9 times 2 squared plus negative 4 times 2 plus why not. So negative 4.9 times 4 is 19.6 plus a negative 8. So negative 19.6 minus 8 plus why not equals 0. We're going to add those over and we get 27.6 meters is why not. So that must be the height of the building. Okay, How far from the base of the building does the ball land? Well now we know our time, t equals two seconds, uh, and so we're going to just say delta x equals v naught in the x direction times t. So this equals 8 times the cosine of 30 degrees times the two seconds. So 8 cosine 30 times 2 is 13.9 meters. Okay. And finally, see what is the vertical component of velocity just before the ball hits the ground. So how fast is it going when it lands? So we can, I'm going to use the third equation. V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A. Oh, why am I doing that? I know exactly how to do this. I want the first equation. It'll be simpler, right? V equals V naught plus AT. I know this. It's negative 4. I know this. Minus 9.8. I know t is 2, so I have negative 19.6 minus 4 is negative 23.6 meters per second. Cool. Okay, And that takes care of it. All right.